Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm back with Word Study Wednesday that's happening on a different day than Wednesday. <laughs> so if you're following me on Instagram, you know, I started out on this study and then it needed a little bit more time spent in it. And also if you've been following me on Instagram, you know, I've been making some adjustments in my home just with how I spend my time, how my kids spend their time, um, and just making my family a priority. And so in the transition, uh, I'm just still kind of learning how to schedule my days and um, carve out time for me to do these videos, but also be attentive to my family and have them um, first and foremost. And so I know a lot of people have reached out and, and let me know that you understand that. So thank you. Um, I want to get to a schedule, but these these Wednesdays come super fast. I don't know about you guys, but it just seems like all of a sudden it's Wednesday again and I, <laughs> I know ideally I should have these filmed ahead of time, but... I'm just not there yet, so that's okay. Um, it's not We're not sticking to a strict schedule. Lots of grace, lots of grace, lots of grace. Um, and same for you guys. If you're joining in with me, um, you do not have to just do these on Wednesdays. The idea, I put them out there just as an accountability type thing um, and just to kind of encourage you guys to do your own word study. So if you are just now joining in with us for Word Study Wednesday, I have a playlist, a link down below with all of the um, previous cards that I have done. What I'm doing is I'm using some um, word focus cards from Open Journey. I will have these linked down below. Um, I've also showed how to use the um, smaller set ones and create your own cards. So there's lots of different options for how to work through this project. Again, this is just meant to be an accountability and encouragement. Um, and so you can work through it however best works for you. I just love having um, the small space to just do a little bit of creative time, especially right now while I'm trying to adjust and figure out how to juggle my time, family time, God time, you know, all of it. It's kind of nice to have a smaller project. So again, all of these um, past videos will be linked down below for you guys so you can get caught up and check those out. Um, I had decided to kind of jump between sets um, just for the sake of you guys if you wanted to uh, copy what I'm doing on any particular week. Um, this way, hopefully there's some variety depending on what set you have. So so the word focus set two is the current set of word focus cards, um, but I realize not everybody has these. So I'm gonna kind of jump between these and the smaller cards. So uh, this week I'm working in the set one set of word focus cards. Um, and so we are working on the word uh, blessed. And you guys, this was one of those ones that just took a whole lot of study. So I'm gonna kind of move aside all of the art part. Um, I try to keep that part simple. simple. We'll see how that goes. But uh, I had like, I mean, literally what? One, two, three, four, five, six pages of notes for the word blessed. So uh, if you're not sure how to do a word study, I will link another video down below. I did a tip Tuesday all about how I do the word study process using a variety of different resources and kind of how I attack it. Um, Everybody's gonna have their own way that works best for them. Um, and you definitely can elaborate. This is not the only way to do it. This is not even necessarily the best way to do it. This is just what works for me. I found that I'm kind of in a groove now. And so typically it takes me about an hour to do these studies. Um, just as I look at the different cross references and resources um, and things like that. But this one, this one took us down a rabbit trail. So um, for the word blessed, Ingrid has um, this Greek word, eulogetos, um, and then a set of scriptures. But then as I started looking at the scriptures, there's actually different um, Greek and Hebrew words uh, used for the word blessed in each one of these verses. And I'll kind of share that with you guys. Um, so the verse, let me start with the first verse and the verse that we are going to be focusing on and the one that I kind of used for my study, but I'll kind of show you some of the other things that I found as well. I know these videos are becoming much longer than some of my other word study Wednesday videos initially have started being, um, but I've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys that you enjoy that as well. So hang tight with me, maybe put me on pause, get a snack, put me on the TV, <laughs> get comfy because we have a lot that I wanna cover with you guys. Um, and so for the verse, the first verse that's listed is Ephesians 1, 3. And that says, uh, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. So in this um, 
verse, Ephesians 1, 3, is the eulogetos Greek word is used for the word blessed. Um, and then as I kind of started to do my study, I found this word eulogetos is actually um, f- the root word is a different word. And you'll find that sometimes when you do um, word studies. And so I don't typically focus on those root words, um, but this one did kind of help elaborate on the word a little bit more. So um, the strongest concordance number for that is gonna be G2128. I've got the uh, pronunciation there, basic definition, blessed or praised, but it's from the word G2127. Now, I apparently did not write down, I think it's uh, U-log is the um, root word, but it says to praise, celebrate with praises, So thinking praise. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think blessed or a lot of people think blessed as being tangible, physical things, right? God blessed me with a family. God blessed me with a job. God blessed me with a car. God blessed me with a house. God blessed me with the money to pay my bills today. Um, Hashtag blessed, right? We see that quite a bit. And that is why I spent so much time in this study because it really helped me understand this word and what the true intention of being blessed, when we're saying we're being blessed, what that actually means, um, and not so much the physical aspect. And I have some notes to share with you guys as we go into that. But so the root word is to praise or celebrate with praises. And then as it um, applies to God, it says to cause to prosper. So he causes us to prosper, to make happy, to bestow blessings on, or favored of God, to speak well of. So it's So it's more of non-tangible type things um, when it comes to specifically what it means to be blessed. Uh, And you'll kind of see this as we go through the verses. So this verse, Luke 142, actually uses that root word. um, uh, Oh, yeah, eulageo. Uh, Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women and your child is blessed. And so we may look at that and say, okay, God blessed her with this baby. The baby is the blessing, but it's actually this bestowing favor upon her. Um, it, it's it's a more abstract type idea as you look at that word. And that's why I love to do word, st- word studies because it really helps you better understand the verses. So then as I went through the list of verses, um, I don't always write them all out, but this time I decided to do that because I came across um, a few different words. So uh, Luke 6.22, what blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the son of man. Now this word for blessings is actually G3107, which is um, uh, Macarios, Macarios, uh, a prolonged form of the poetic, a poetical word makar, meaning the same, happy, fortunate, well off. So while she lists um, eulogetos, these are not necessarily like totally different words. Um, so this isn't necessarily a mistake. Uh, all of these versions of the words pretty much mean the same thing. They're just slightly different. Kind of, you know, in English language, we have that happens as well. Um, you know, like, I don't know, I can't think of an example offhand right away, but there, there are ways that we have um, different words for the same meaning um, in English. And so G3107 um, is a different word in the Greek, um, but essentially means the same, happy, fortunate, well off. So again, not necessarily a tangible physical object. It's more of a state of being. And that's what we see in this Ephesians 1.3, um, spiritual blessings. So we're actually talking more about spiritual things, not necessarily worldly tangible things. So continuing on, Matthew 5.5 5 is going to be that same um, Macarios word. Um, God blesses those who are humble for they will inherit the whole earth. Uh, Same thing for Luke 14, 15. Hearing this, a man sitting at the table with Jesus exclaimed, what a blessing it will be to attend a banquet in the kingdom of God. Remembering fortunate, well-off, happy, um, meaning the same prolonged form of the poetical makar. So this is also has a root um, word, but fortunate, well-off or happy. So how happy it will be to be able to attend the banquet in the kingdom of God. 
So I typically use the New Living Translation because I'm doing these word studies using my Hope and Encouragement Bible. I'll link that one down below. Um, and so I ran into something that I wanted to point out because you may run into this as well if you're using a variety of different translations. And this is why I encourage you to have a variety of different translations. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need to have physical Bibles in those other translations, but there are apps out there. The Blue Light Letter Bible app um, is a great one, for example, um, that contains a variety of translations. It makes it in the palm of your hand very easy to compare and contrast and look at different translations. And so initially when I sat down to read this verse, Psalm 72, 18 through 19, um, it was worded praise. I think it's like praise to the Lord God, um, the God of Israel. And I'm like, wait, where is the word blessed. There is no word blessed in this verse. And so I had to flip over. Um, I think I went over to the ESV or the King James version. Now keep in mind the Strong's Concordance um, is actually based out of the King James version. That's the version that it uses um, when it does the numbering system and that kind of thing. It's, it's using the King James. And so uh, you may run into this where you read a verse and you're like, wait, my word that I'm studying is not in that verse flip over to another translation. Um, and uh, again, it kind of helps you understand some of the different um, meanings of that word and other words um, that can be used in place of that word, like praise, which we see, um, uh, this is gonna be a Hebrew because we're in the Old Testament. And so this is actually a different word used for the word blessed. So anyways, all I have to say, when I went over to the King James Version, it actually says, blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone works wonders, and blessed be his glorious name forever. And may the whole earth be filled with his glory. Again, that's Psalm 72, 18 through 19. Um, and so this word blessed actually uses H1288, which is Barak, to bless, kneel, to praise, salute, curse, by implication to bless God as an act of adoration and vice versa, man as a benefit. So praise, salute, um, an act of adoration, um, whether that be towards God or God towards us. Um, and so again, it's not totally different than these other words, but there are some slight differences and you'll see that um, and kind of helps you understand the difference between this verse as opposed to Ephesians 1, 3, that there is a little bit of a difference between those. So I just went in parentheses and wrote um, the word praise because that's how it shows up in the NLT translation and then wrote it out with the focus word in the, I think this is the King James that I used. Then we have another one, 8835. So here we have, um, blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. That's Psalm 1-1. In the New Living Translation, it says, um, oh, the joys of those people who do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. So, oh, the joys of those instead of blessed. So if we look at H835, that word is Escher, happiness, blessedness, often used as an interjection, blessed are, only in masculine, plural construction, interjection, how happy. So this is a very specific, um, you know, when you look at grammar, and this is used in, in specific grammatical instances, um, is this word. And so, again, you wouldn't necessarily know that when you just see the same word used throughout all of these verses, and that's why I enjoy doing these word studies. Psalm 118, 26 goes back to H1288, which is that Barak um, to praise, salute, curse, um, an act of adoration. Um, and so it's going to say, bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Psalm 118, 26. So that is kind of the fun part of doing these word studies is seeing that, is seeing all these different words and the meanings and um, looking at the different ways that they're used and the root words. And you start to... Um, as you do these more and more, it becomes a little easier because you kind of under, start to understand that and grasp those ideas. So it's it's just like exercising. You're working those muscles, right? So um, I did go ahead and write out all those different um, versions of that word. But for my card, I will be using the Eulogatos, um, what is it, G... 
2128 is the verse and the word that I am, I'm sorry, the word that I'll be using in Ephesians 1-3 is the verse that I will be using from here on out for my focus. So um, what that means is when I go into the Blue Letter Bible app, then I'm looking at the commentary for that word. I'm looking at um, specifically the the Strong's Concordance for that version of the word um, and then the commentary on that. And so um, that is where I get this commentary, which is from a variety of different people. And that just kind of then expands on this as we are studying that word. Because when I just read, okay, so it means to praise, or oh, it means that we're well off, or oh, it means to speak well of. Okay, but let's elaborate. Let's let's go a little deeper than that. And so there was um, some commentary in the Blue Letter Bible app. Um, Mole says, um, praised with worshiping love. Um, and then this is from, I believe... This is going to be either David Guzik or Chuck Smith, probably. Um, Paul called for a blessing upon the Father in the sense of recognizing his glory and honor and goodness because the Father has already blessed the believer with every spiritual blessing. So again, just to remind you, this is specifically for Ephesians 1.3. That verse says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. So again, Paul called for a blessing upon the Father, so recognizing his glory and honor and goodness, because the Father has already blessed the believer with every spiritual blessing. Our response should be praise and adoration for the Father, right? Because of every spiritual blessing, salvation, the ability to spend eternity with him. That is that that is the biggest blessing we can possibly have. And when, you know, we look and try to, you know, I don't know about you, but there's sometimes there's comparison. Why does it feel like this person, their life is so much more blessed than mine in a worldly standard, right? Um, but we are all equally, we all equally have the ability to attain life with Christ forever. Um, we just have to submit our lives, right? We just have to acknowledge who he is. Um, and so that is the most important blessing. We are all blessed in that sense. Uh, Spurgeon says, we are, I love how he words this. So he's got a couple here. We are not sitting here and groaning and crying and fretting and worrying and questioning our own salvation. He has blessed us and therefore we will bless him. If you think little of what God has done for you, you will do very little for him. Now, let me just say that this does not mean a works-based salvation. Um, that's not it at all. Our salvation is not attained by works. But in response to being thankful for what he has done for sending his son to save us, we should want to commit our lives to him, right? Commit our lives in full service to God. Um, but if we think very little of this great sacrifice that he committed, well, we're going to want to do very little for him. We're not going to have that that respect and awe for him. But if you have a good, uh, if you have a great notion of his great mercy to you, you will be greatly grateful to your gracious God. Totally kind of changes this idea of blessed, right? It's not just about tangible things, right? Things that we can't take with us when we die. Um, looking at these spiritual blessings, the blessing of salvation. Uh, this one is from Spurgeon as well. Our thanks are due to God for all temporal blessings. They are more than we deserve. But our thanks ought to go to God in the thunders of hallelujahs for spiritual blessings. A new heart is better than a new coat. To feed on Christ is better than to have the best earthly food. To be an heir of God is better than being the heir of the greatest nobleman. To have God for our portion is blessed, infinitely. More blessed than to own broad acres of land. God hath blessed us with spiritual blessings. These are the rarest, the richest, the most enduring of all blessings. They are priceless in value. As I was studying this, I kept thinking about the fruits of the Spirit and looking more at those as being the blessings that I want versus the blessings of stuff. I want to be blessed with patience, love, kindness, gentleness, right? Self-control. Those are those spiritual blessings that I want to be blessed with. Those mean more to me than money in the bank or a beautiful house or, you know, whatever it might be. I want those spiritual blessings. Um, and so I think that maybe that can help us kind of change our focus when it comes to those things as well. David Guzik says, if we have no appreciation for spiritual blessing, then we live at the level of animals. Animals live only to eat, sleep, entertain themselves, and reproduce. We are made in the image of God, and he has something much higher for us, yet many choose to live at the level of animals. God wants us to know every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. 
Are we going to just be concerned with animal needs, right? Just the basic um, basic things like um, entertaining ourselves, eating, sleeping, reproducing. We are made in the image of God. We are higher than the animals. We are, we are created in his image. Don't you think that we mean more to him, that we are, be- are his beloved? Um, and so he is going to care more for us than just our flitting wants and things that are just worldly, temporary things. Uh, and so David Guzik, he, he, I, I feel I've, I can relate with his way of just laying it out in a very, you know, uh, upfront kind of way. He definitely does that. I'm going to skip this for a second because I went over to gotquestions.org because I wanted to just um, go just a little bit. I wanted to get some more commentary. Um, I love the scholars that are in the Blue Letter Bible app commentary section, um, but gotquestions.org is a great resource, um, especially if you've got questions like, you know, what does the Bible say about baptism? What does the Bible say about salvation? What does the Bible say, you know, X, Y, Z? Um, my old, the pastor that just left our church actually went to school with the guy who found gotquestions.org. So it's a very sound um, website to use uh, and they have really great resources over there. And so I just searched, I think I just searched blessed. Like, what does it mean to be blessed? Um, and so they focused on the Makarios um, version, which is the one that we see in Luke 6.22. What blessings await you when people hate you and exclude you and mock you and curse you as evil because you follow the Son of Man. Um, again, that's the uh, happy, fortunate, well-off. So just a little bit different than the one that we're looking at in Ephesians, but it says, um, this blessedness is a spiritual state of well-being and prosperity, a deep joy-filled contentment that cannot be shaken by poverty, grief, famine, persecution, war, or any other trial or tragedy we face in life. I'd rather be blessed with these, um, a state of well-being, I'm sorry, I would rather be blessed with a deep, joy-filled contentment rather than temporary things. We might be saying that we are blessed with this house, but what happens when a fire comes through and burns down that house? Does that mean that you are less blessed? Does that mean that, you know, you can kind of get caught up into all of these temporary things when these, I want these deep, joy-filled contentment that cannot be shaken, I don't want my peace, my happiness, my joy, my love for others to be shaken by grief or famine, persecution, war, or any other trial in my life. I want to be blessed with those spiritual blessings. Um, also says, inner state of joy that is unaffected by external trials. I thought that was a good way to sum it up. And so as I was going through the Blue Letter Bible app, there was also this breakdown. I don't typically look... Um, any further than like David Guzik, Chuck Smith. Those are kind of the two that I use most frequently um, and kind of the easiest to understand. But I scrolled down to the bottom of the commentaries and was looking at some of the other like sermons that I've done. I think there were a couple uh, Spurgeon sermons in there specifically on blessings. Um, And then there was this uh, little tidbit from F.E. Marsh. And I liked how this was broken down. It says, the blessing of existence is good, But the best of all blessings is to have the embodiment of all blessing, even Christ. And so it took these different aspects of blessing. So the source of blessing is the Father. The channel, so how we receive those blessings, is Christ. And then there's verse references here. So we have Luke 24, 30. The source was Ephesians 1, 3. Uh, The power of blessing is the Holy Spirit, Galatians 3.14. The promise of blessing is in the scriptures, Hebrews 6.14. The reception of blessing is by faith, Galatians 3.9. The path of blessing is obedience, Matthew 5, 3 through 11. When we are acting in obedience, that is when we are going to experience blessings from God. If we are just wallowing in our sin and um, celebrating our sin behavior, We're not going to have so many blessings in our life because that's not the path that God wants for us. We need to obey, not because that's what earns us salvation. That's not how that works, um, but it's because that's how God wants our life to be. He has laid it out for us. Um, We have a book uh, of—it's a manual, an instruction for our life, and we need to live our life in obedience to Him. The character of blessing is spiritual, according to Ephesians 1.3, which that, again, is that verse that we're focusing on. The outcome of blessing is separation, Acts 3, 26. Now, this one is talking about being separated from um, like the wicked, the unsaved. So it separates us 
right? That's all, that's part of being a Christian is being different from others, right? Being different from the world, being set apart. The consummation of blessing is at Christ's return, Titus 2, 13. The ultimate blessing is going to be when Christ returns. There's new heavens, new earth. Everything is made right. There's no more tears, right? No more pain, no more heartache, no more sin. That is going to be the ultimate blessing. So I just liked how that was laid out. So as you can see, I took a little bit of extra time studying the word this week. I could even go further down these little trails if I wanted to, um, but I didn't want to keep you here for hours and hours and hours. So there's a study. I would really encourage you guys to do the same for this one here. Um, and so for the back of the card, remember, this is what I attach in case I do anything that gets messy on this card. Uh, again, focusing on Ephesians 1, 3, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Went ahead and did the transliteration, pronunciation, definition. I did make a notation that it is from this G2127 to praise, celebrate with praises. And then I use the Spurgeon quote, um, we are not sitting here and groaning and crying and fretting and worrying and questioning our own salvation. He has blessed us and therefore we will bless him. That's the one that I included on here. So I hope that that encourages you to do your own study time. I hope that maybe this um, kind of helps you, especially as we're going into these holiday seasons, right? We are all hyper aware of our finances and our living situations and um, just life around us, right? I mean, even with everything that's been going on in the last two years and with social media and, and being able to see everybody else's lives, we start looking at physical worldly versions of being hashtag blessed. Um, and so hopefully this was an encouragement to just think differently about that phrase and maybe to um, as an accountability for me to use that phrase a little bit differently as I think about um, things in my life and ways that I have been blessed. And so maybe that'll be an encouragement. So moving on to the art part. Now I did go ahead and type this out. And for this set of cards, I have hole punched them and put them on rings. Um, my bad. I was not paying attention and went ahead and just typed out this card. But obviously... If I punch it, I'm gonna punch right through <laughs> my verse. So I'm actually gonna do this upside down. So I'm gonna intentionally do that upside down, just like that. So, you know, we all make mistakes. I just wanted to show that to you as an encouragement as well. It doesn't always go how I had initially planned. Um, and so for the card, what I've done is I'm still playing with the uh, new Indomino kit. If you've not seen this, I will link the unboxing down below. This is gonna be the new Advent kit. Um, though it is not Advent specific, you can work through this at any time. Um, and I am just loving this I have not dove into the devotional content yet, but I am just loving every bit and piece of the graphics and things since I had played with some of the digitals. Um, and so that was gonna be kind of my inspiration for using on the card today. Uh, it's getting a little colder here in California, so I'm thinking more winter. We even have our tree set up before Thanksgiving for the first time ever. So we're gonna play with some snowflakes today. So I have this little card here. Now this actually comes in the physical uh, in Domino kit. It's a journaling card. I love this. I wanted to save it and use it, but keep in mind you have digitals also that you can purchase. Um, and so I can reprint this in the digitals and use it for something separate. I'm actually going to die cut um, from this card. And so I'm using these snowflake dies. If these are still available, I'll link them down below. I'm going to mix them with some silver cardstock as well, and we are gonna kinda age them up with some alcohol inks, not necessary, um, but it's a fun technique if you want to kinda grunge them up a little bit. I'm using this little tidbit. This is a leftover from last week's Word Study Wednesday from the printables that I had cut apart. This is gonna be my background. So again, because I spent so much time studying, I wanna keep this fairly simple on the card. Um, and so this is gonna be my background element, um, and then we're gonna play with some glitters and things like that, but it should be should be fairly simple. and you can adapt it um, to based off of the products that you have on hand, making it more elaborate, simpler, whatever you want to do. So let me go ahead and put you guys on fast forward and we'll start putting together this word study card. Okay, so I'm working on my media mat. I don't love this for filming because there's a lot of glare, so just bear with me, but I'm trying to protect my desk from all of the mess. So I'm gonna start by layering the sticker onto the background of the card. This I printed using the digitals from the Indomino kit and just cut it down to fit the card. And look at that, 
instant background. We're good to go. But I wanted it to be a little more muted. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do that here in a second. But um, I am going to add my powder tool through the holes just to remove the stickiness. And we will repunch those holes at the end of the card. But I'm gonna use my brayer and some white gesso and brayer this over the top of the card um, just to kind of mute that background a little bit more so it's not as um, bright. Now I did print this using my inkjet printer um, and inkjet is not permanent. So what's happening is I'm actually activating the ink and kind of picking up some of that blue ink and moving it around uh, the card. It's fine because I want it to be grungy in the background, but I am going to go ahead and mask off the bottom just to protect it um, because I am moving around some of the ink. If you don't want the ink to move on your stickers, then you need to invest in a laser jet printer or send off your printables to be printed professionally with a laser jet and then it won't be activated by anything wet. So just adding a few layers of that just to kind of mute the background. And then we're gonna do something a little bit crazy here. I wanted to add some of this rock candy glitter, um, but I wasn't sure what glue to use. So I'm going in with some resist spray. Um, this is from Ranger. You can definitely search out videos about this. It's kind of a finicky spray. You need to see what Tim Holtz says about it. Um, mine is actually in a different container because it's finicky. It's like a glue and it dries super fast and you have to rinse out the nozzle of your sprayer. I didn't do that and I ruined the sprayer. So I've actually transferred it to another spray bottle and it dries fast. So I sprayed it over the card and then dusted some of that rock candy glitter on it immediately. Um, and then it dries, sets, glued it on there. Um, there's a lot of different techniques you can do with resist spray. So check it out, YouTube, Tim Holtz, resist spray, and he gives you all the details, all the different ways you can use it. Um, it creates some texture. It's a really interesting spray and I just need to use it a little bit more. It's just kind of fussy to work with. And i did it in my splat box because it's it's permanent. It would have ruined my, my media mat if I wasn't careful. So real quick, I die cut out these snowflakes, a variety of snowflakes using that journaling card and then some of this um, metallic cardstock. And we are gonna kind of age this metallic. You'll see the difference between those two snowflakes there. Um, metallic cardstock is slightly coated. Um, the one I have is pretty inexpensive, so it is absorbent, but there's enough of a coating that you can work with alcohol inks. So I'm just putting a little bit of alcohol blending solution on these snowflakes and then dropping in some slate alcohol ink. And then this other one is an alloy. It's foundry and it's a mix of like silver and golds. Um, it almost looks like tarnished silver is the way that this looks when I'm finished with it. Uh, I don't love silver. I prefer gold over silver. And so I want it to be more of an antiqued um, kind of look to it. You don't have to do this step. This is definitely extra and over the top. Um, but it just, you know, kind of is something fun and helps me to use the different products that I have. I have alcohol inks. I don't use them often enough. Um, Again, why I'm working on the media mat, because uh, alcohol inks can be a little fussy. So I'm just trying, I'm trying to use, use up my stuff, guys. That's what I'm trying to do. So I cut some of the larger snowflakes out of that journaling card and then the smaller ones from those metallic card stocks. And I'm going to layer these together using some liquid adhesive. Um you can't really see that, you know, there's a mountainscape on those snowflakes, but that's okay. I just was using it more as a patterned paper um, to punch the snowflakes. You could do a lot of different things. You could just ink up a background. You could use pattern paper. Um, I was just trying to work with items that were in the kit and show you some creative ways to maybe use things that you, maybe you don't use journaling cards in your journaling Bible. So this is a way to use those in, um, you know, kind of think outside of the box way. So then I'm just kind of figuring out how I want those positioned. I loved how the background looks like a snowy scene because we used that white gesso and it kind of moved the colors around and it looks very like soft and muted. Um, this is coming along. So I'm adding some foam adhesive to the back of these snowflakes. This is another reason I like working on these cards versus my journaling Bible is I can add dimension and just do things that I don't typically do in well, I add foam adhesive, but not everybody else adds foam adhesive into their journaling Bibles. So I'm removing the backers and then I'm going to sandwich some of this gold thread between the snowflake and the card. So this is just metallic gold thread. I'm going to wrap it and then you'll watch. I kind of like ball it up in my hands to create a messy nest of thread. 
And this is also why I added that foundry alcohol ink to those metallic snowflakes um, because it has little flecks of gold in it. It's going to tie in this gold thread. So I'm going to have a mix of golds and silvers on this card. And you can't see the rock candy glitter on the card in the camera necessarily, but in person, um, it just has a soft snowy shimmer that picks up the light. It's just a very wintry scene that we got going on here. I'm doing the same thing for all three of these snowflakes, adding the foam adhesive. Um, some of my foam adhesive is a little bit older, and so I am adding some liquid adhesive to it as well. Also, because there's so much texture on the background from that glitter and from the resist spray, um, I'm using a little bit of liquid adhesive just so that it adheres well. I don't want this to fall apart. So I'm gonna just hold that. This liquid adhesive dries pretty quickly. I'm going to try to remember to link it down below. I don't always remember to link it, but it's Barely Arts um, Precision Craft Glue, and it is my go-to glue for everything lately. This smaller snowflake, uh, I kind of wish I had die cut out of the darker section of the paper because it's kind of getting lost in the background, um, but that gold thread kind of helps offset it a little bit more as well, and the silver cardstock also kind of helps it stand out a little bit more. So I didn't have enough shimmer on here, so I masked off the bottom with a piece of paper, and I'm using some of these um, starry, Gonzai Tombi starry colors. These are gold metallic watercolors. Um, you spray water into them, and you want to really work the watercolor. So you want to mix it, get it really juicy before you use it, because the metallic pigments are heavier, um, and so... To get the most metallic payoff, you really need to kind of juice up that watercolor before you uh, use it on your project. So I'm just using a variety of brushes. Brushes give you different size splatters. So if you're frustrated with your Lindsay splatters, um, it might just be that you need to try a different brush. Some brushes give you big splatters. Some give you finer splatters. Um, you see here I'm using three different brushes to get a lot of different um, sized splatters on that card. And then I set it aside to dry. In the meantime, I'm going to stamp on the back side of the card the uh, Strong's Concordance number. I'm using some gold ink, and it's G2128. Uh, I don't know that the numbers are still available, but the alpha should still be available, so I'll link those down below for you guys. And then I had a little bit of that color that had kind of seeped onto the bottom of the card. So I'm using a sand eraser, and this is a trick that I use quite frequently. Um, it's basically removing the top layer of the paper, but it's also removing any, you know, paint or ink or anything that got onto the white area that I didn't want on there. So I will have that link down below for you guys as well. So now I can glue these together. Remember, I'm gluing the back upside down because I did not pre-plan. <laughs> I don't want to hole punch through the verse trimming up any excess, and then I'll pull out my planner punch board. You can use a regular hole punch. Remember, you don't have to use everything that I use in my videos. Adapt it for what you have in your stash and what works for you. I'm just using what I have at my disposal. So there's a look at the finished card. You're getting a little hint of that sparkle and texture and yumminess in the background. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box for links to everything that I mentioned today. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.